All right, well, we finally did it. We found a foaming agent that's better than seventh generation or other dish detergents. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about why we switched from dish detergent to this foaming agent. We just built this amazing aircrete dome behind me. It only took two gallons. This is a five gallon jug and we still have half of it left. With dish detergent, it would have taken about eight gallons to build a similar dome. So I'm pretty excited about this. So first off, dish detergent and seventh generation soaps, they still work. In a lot of parts of the world where you can't get something like this, it's still gonna be your best option. But that said, there's nothing more frustrating than having problems with your aircrete, like collapsing or other issues. So in our everything you need to know about aircrete video, we talk about some of these problems that you can run into, but they're basically things like cold weather, bad cement, high amounts of minerals in the water, overmixing, or even just a bad recipe to begin with. Using a foaming agent like this can help you avoid some of those problems. So when you're making aircrete, the most important thing is to have high quality foam. And there's two factors to the quality of your foam. One is that you've got a really good bubble shape. And so that's gonna be really fine bubbles that are close together, but not touching. You also want these bubbles to stay around for a long time. The bubbles need to hold their integrity until the cement cures. And if they lose their integrity too soon, that's when you have collapsing and other issues. When we're comparing a foaming agent like this to standard dish detergent, it does much, much better in both categories. It makes a better shape bubble, which gives you a higher compressive strength of your aircrete and also a better insulation value. But the foam itself also has a really high integrity, so it stays around for a long time. It works great in cold weather. You can pump it. You don't have to worry about over mixing and it, it eliminates a lot of the issues that you run into with dish detergent. You also need a lot less of it. So like I mentioned, we only use two gallons for this entire build versus about the eight gallons of dish detergent that you would use. And so one thing that's interesting is the target density of this foam is only about 40 grams per quart where with dish detergent, it's about 90 to 100 grams per quart. This also means that our Dragon XL foam generator produces the foam a lot faster. So your aircrete mixes also go quite a bit faster because it's running at a much higher air pressure and then the volume of foam that it generates is just a lot more. Because you use so much less foaming agent, you spend less time also mixing your foaming agent solution and you don't need as big of a reservoir. Ooh, okay. That's a lot better. It was hot out there and it's nice and cool inside this aircrete dome. So what is this foaming agent? This is a product called Merlecrete Dash S and it's a synthetic foaming agent made by a company called Erix Industries. Now Erix Industries, as far as I can tell, is the leaders in foaming agents and they have many different types for different applications, but they're all used in really large industrial and commercial projects. Um, like building highways and overpasses and large commercial buildings. They also use it to insulate the roof of large commercial buildings. So they actually pump, they'll make the aircrete, they call it cellular concrete, but they make it and they pump it really high, you know, through pipes for really long distances. So these foams are able to withstand the pumping and the pressure and all of those things. The synthetic part is nice because most foaming agents like this are protein based and you can probably guess where the proteins come from but they smell really terrible. So most DIY people won't touch them and don't wanna use them. So this synthetic product really has no smell at all and it's basically non-toxic. So Eric's Industries normally sells this by the pallet load and hundreds of gallons at a time. For most people like you or I, it's difficult to get your hands on this. Domgaia has made a special deal with them to allow us to repackage it and sell it in small quantities through our website. So that's the exciting part is you can actually get this right through the domgaia.com website in one quart, one gallon, and five gallon jugs. And now what's the cost? A five gallon jug of this stuff costs $600. And wow, that sounds like a lot. Considering it only took half of that, so $300 to build this entire dome, the seventh generation dish detergent that we normally would use would cost about $200 to build this dome. This costs $300, so it is $100 more but I feel like it's really worth it. And for that reason, we're gonna be using this on all of our builds going forward. Okay, so just when you thought this video was over, I actually have a special treat. I got to go to Eric's Industries and interview their head research scientist and take a little tour of their laboratory. And we're gonna learn a little bit more about foam and show you around. So what's the most difficult part of making high quality aircrete? Good question, it's the foam. And today we're at Eric's Industries and we're gonna to talk to their senior research scientist all about foam and how to make the best aircrete.
When I started this in 1980s at the Colorado School of Mines, we did use dish soaps. They worked, but then it got a little more high tech and it, it didn't work as well. There's a lot of ingredients in dish soap that are irrelevant to what we're doing here. You don't need them. Whereas our ingredients, you need every one of them. You know, that's not saying dish soap won't work, but if you, if you get something more tailored to cement, it's just gonna work that much better. So how long have you guys been making filming so, agents? Since 1940. 1940. There, yeah. I can guarantee you this. There's a, nobody that hasn't seen our material, touched our material, walked on our material, and drove on material that okay. came out of this lab. Okay. It's used that extensively. The most important part of cellular concrete is the addition of foam. That determines what kind of material you're going to have. you got to have a good bubble structure. So I can show you a prime example. Let me get this foam unit here working first. You see the difference in the foam? See that one on the left? Well, this is what it's supposed to look like, the one on the left. If you look at it, look at the difference there. See the one on the mm -hmm. right? Can't see the bubbles, can you? Yeah. See that one, you see the bubbles? That, that makes a big difference in your yeah. products. Most of the companies out there have one foam. What happens with us, we get a call, hey, we need to do this. Well, we don't quite have a foam for that application, but we got such a vast knowledge in foams, we could come up with one. On the Merle Cree S, what you're using for your product, we chose that material because it's got a real tight bubble structure. Okay. And having that tight bubble structure is going to give you a better R value, and it's right. going to be a lot more stable. This is your Merle Cree S. Okay. And, and this is just our regular geotechnical foams. Now, now look at the size of them yeah. bubbles. Very, very different. Very, very different. This material on your domes is going to be have a very much higher R value than that. Right. So this is what your Merle Creed S looks like, and this is what okay. typical geotechnical. So we're really focused on, on cell structure. Merle Creed S is a synthetic home. In a nutshell, it's designed to keep a tight bubble and be stiffer. It's not as runny. And the fact that it doesn't flow everywhere, you could form it a little bit easier. So these are four different aircrete samples. So this is the Merlecrete with the 1L cement. Okay. This is the Merlecrete with the 1 slash 2 cement. This is with the seventh generation dish detergent. And then this is with Drexel. I don't, do you know what Drexel is? No. It's a foaming agent that's used in agricultural oh. applications. And a lot of DIY people have been using that. And it actually gets, you can see a pretty nice bubble, but I, this was a sample um, that someone made that I collected. And it's interesting because it's got all this internal cracking, yeah. which is interesting. This is the Merle Crete. You can see that it doesn't have the fine bubbles. Because yeah, when you showed me your sample over the, like right here, yeah, yeah, so no, why are these why are these bubbles so you know much it, it could you might have your density a little bit off and everything but as far as durability goes you don't sure don't want that no you know? that and something's and weird that that happens here you're probably if you're getting this on your low creed s you, you could probably maybe increase the dosage on the Merle creed s or whatever but out of all of these this looks good and this looks good this kind of looks good, but you can't you, you yeah. can't have that. That's no good. Do you know what causes that? I mean, my speculation was it's like it's sort of shrinking or something. That's exactly what's happening. It during its dry time, it it's not distributing the the fresh of strength and the heat it's not, uniformly, so it, it's causing it to crack. Like one of the things that I was wondering about was temperature because it was when we made these. This was in Arkansas, and it was really hot. Yeah, it was, you know, like probably nine in the mid nineties or so temperature wise. So our water and everything, you know, it, it was warm. Basically. That's going to cause that you, you don't want your water above like 85 degrees. And so, and the water probably was below that, but you know, I don't know if it's been sitting outside for a while. Yeah, no, that's certainly that everything. Affected. Cause I noticed even on the tops of some of the samples, it like really it, it rises. Out. What happens is when it's heat, when it's in its plastic state, the gas rises and it causes it to rise and it'll weaken it. 
So if you did this in hot weather, this was starting to rise and it just cracked it with something like this more absorbed them. That heat riser didn't cause it to fail, right? On real hot days, we'll usually throw ice in it. Interesting, okay. And that helps out a lot, yeah. Is there a minimum temperature for the water? Like, you know, you, like you it could know. be 40 degrees or 35 degrees water. Right. Okay. This is good. There's nothing wrong with this. Okay. Um, the mercury, yes, should look like this, but if you had hot weather and da 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 okay. da, you, that we you don't should. want that. Yeah. Yeah. And then this sample, you can kind of see there's a little bit of a cold joint in there also. What was this? That's the seventh generation dish detergent. It's actually probably more expensive to use dishwashing soap, anyways. Yeah, my calculations show it's pretty similar. If so, depends on what you're paying for your product. So why not just get? Yeah. I mean, totally get something yeah. that's got a, a lab behind yeah. you and 40 years of experience. Wow! So that was an amazing interview and so much information. One of the things we've been doing at Dumb Guy over the last few years is constantly improving what we're doing and working to make Aircrete and the Dumb Guy building system as robust and as professional as we can. And so we've been working with engineers and building departments and using these products is only gonna help really elevate um, the science and the experience and the repeatability about what we're doing. Also using these products, we're gonna be eliminating a lot of problems that people have when it comes to making aircrete and getting more consistent results over and over again.